Check this out. Now I didn't bother trying to speak over that, but today I'm going to synthesize potassium chlorate using calcium hypochlorite pool chlorinating granules. To get started, all I do is add 130 grams of the pool chlorinator to an Erlenmeyer flask and fill it up to around 400 milliliters with distilled water. This is then boiled for 2 to 3 hours and I add some more water as it evaporates because I want to maintain 400 milliliters. What happens during the boiling is a dispropanation reaction where the calcium hypochlorite turns into calcium chlorate and calcium chloride. This is then filtered to remove the insoluble impurities from the pool chlorinating granules. This step also gets rid of the pink color that arose during the boiling, and I still do not know what caused that color. I also wanted to note that I've made potassium chlorate in the past using electrolysis, but I find this method a lot safer and a lot easier. Regardless, this still isn't something you should do at home without professional experience. Anyway, once the solution is filtered, I transfer it to a beaker and put it on a hot plate to boil with constant stirring. Once it heats up a bit, I'm going to add 35 grams of potassium chloride. At this point, the potassium ions are going to bind to the chlorate ions forming potassium chlorate. The resulting solution here is going to contain some quantities of potassium chlorate, potassium chloride, calcium chlorate, and calcium chloride. However, the potassium chlorate is going to be easy to separate because all of those other salts are extremely soluble in water, while potassium chlorate is fairly insoluble. With that said, I just let this boil for about an hour, which is probably longer than it even needs to go. I then filter it off and let it sit on the counter overnight to cool to room temperature. As it cools to room temperature, the potassium chlorate will crystallize and fall out of solution, while all the other salts will remain dissolved in the solution. At that point, I can just break the crystals up and collect them by filtration. The potassium chlorate collected at that point would be reasonably pure, but still definitely contaminated with small amounts of the other salts I mentioned. This will be more than pure enough for my applications, but if you wanted extreme purity, you could always do a recrystallization. As a side note, potassium chlorate used to be used fairly widely as a rocket propellant before it was replaced by superior alternatives. Nowadays it's mostly used to generate oxygen in a laboratory setting, which is what I plan to use it for. In any case, once these crystals were fully desiccated, my final yield came out to just around 37 grams of reasonably pure potassium chlorate. I didn't calculate a percent yield, but 37 grams feels pretty good, especially considering the yields I've gotten in the past doing this by electrolysis. Anyway, that's the entire process. I hope you found this interesting, and if you'd like to see more content like this, consider giving me a follow or even becoming a patron on my Patreon. As a side note, becoming a patron gives you early access clips to a lot of the projects I'm working on, as well as a couple other benefits I'm working on improving.